today we're talking about the Lone Peak Ultra 8. I recently got a comment that said something along the lines of you managed to yap for 25 minutes when you could easily done it in three. So I know when to take a compliment when I see one. So today we're going to be yapping about the Lone Peaks and my experience as a first time user of these shoes ever. I've recently decided to check these out for backpacking as many people do. The reasons why you might turn to a trail runner is because they're typically more lightweight, they breathe easier, they dry faster. So all those things can be a positive for sure. But again, if you're researching the Lone Peak 8s to see if these are the right shoes for you, you probably also notice that these have recently in the last few years fallen out of favor with through hikers and some of the most major backpacking people in YouTube today. Now, do they fall apart on the first time you're on the trail? Some people claim so. There are some people that have actually said that these shoes will just fall apart on them right away. But if you're someone like me that's just barely getting into backpacking, you do a lot of hiking, but you're really new to backpacking and you're trying to find the right thing for you, I would say try and look past the noise a little bit and ask yourself what's good enough for you. Is it 100 miles? Is it 500 miles? Is it 1,000 miles? What kind of hiking or backpacking do you plan on doing? Are these gonna be your primary backpacking and hiking shoes? For me, for me personally, I would say that because someone didn't get through a through hike all the way without these things falling apart on them, I don't know if that means that they suck. So figure out what it is you're looking for. What is good enough? How many miles are you expecting to get out of your shoes versus how much they cost? All that kind of stuff. So why am I switching to a, a trail runner? Well, last year I was doing a lot of my, my mainly day hiking and a couple backpacking trips in Solomon Ultra 4s. When I was first researching those shoes, there was a lot of bad reviews, just like the Lone Peak 8s have. Issues with quality, so on and so forth. But I found out that for what I need them to do for me, they worked out perfectly. I would say, except for one major thing, I don't really think I'll buy another Gore-Tex boot again. I just, I don't need it in California. So on a hike like we're doing today in Topanga Canyon, when I would take the Ultra 4s, my feet were on fire. I just realized I say Ultra and Ultra pretty similar, so sorry if that confuses people. The Solomon Ultra 4s were just running way too hot. So I needed a trail runner that was gonna allow my feet to breathe, and I really think that these do the trick. As you can tell, I'm sweating. It's you know, it's only like 70 something out here, but it's pretty warm, you're, you're pretty exposed. And I think I'm rounding around five or six miles or so today. And not once, not one time did I feel like, wow, my feet are starting to get way too warm. And I would always feel that with the Gore-Tex boots. So that's one major reason why I decided to go with trail runners. I would say the other close two are, they're gonna be a little bit lighter and they're gonna dry quicker. So for most of the situations that I'm gonna find myself in with stream crossings and warm temperatures in California, I think trail runners are gonna be the right direction for me. If you follow the channel, you know that a few weeks ago, I was trying out the Olympus 5 from Ultra. And while those are super, super comfortable, I don't see myself wearing those for anything more than just really localized, really firm ground. They just don't seem to be flexible enough. I only took them on one hike, but, but my first impressions are that's not what I'm gonna take out into the backcountry. I just, I don't see it happening. With the Olympus 5s, they just seem to be a little bit too much cushion, a little too stiff. The Lone Peak 8 seems to be just about where I need it with the cushion and with the flexibility. I'm actually really, really surprised and impressed with how flexible these shoes are. One thing that they managed to get right on these shoes for sure is the amount of shoelace that you have available to tie. There's a lot of space on each side of the shoe for some air to get in and out. One of the things that I do have to ding these shoes for is the lack of a Vibram sole. I just, I really don't want to buy stuff without a Vibram sole, but I wanted to try these out so bad. With the Lone Peak 8, you have something called the Max Trax Trail Claw. Overall, I think the tread is going to be fine, but it's not a Vibram sole, so I don't know how long this is going to stay sticky. I'm really digging the fabric that wraps around this. Ultra calls this a rip stop mesh. Feels very comfortable. It feels a little plasticky to the touch, but it's very flexible at the same time. So I have confidence that this is gonna last a while, that this is gonna be durable, it's gonna serve me well. I won't be putting these through a PCT or anything like that. So one thing I can tell that I'm gonna need to do for sure is I'm gonna need to get some gaiters for these. I was hoping that it wouldn't end up being the case, but but I still got stuff inside my socks and inside the shoes. And if I'm gonna be on a multi-day backpacking trip, I don't want the inside of my shoes getting dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and get gaiters for these. On the test video of the Olympus 5s, people really seemed to like that I was using trail runners for bouldering and climbing rocks. So I didn't leave it out of the experiment this time. I went running up and down these rocks just to kind of 
check and see how sticky they are, how responsive they are. I wanted to look at the bottom of the soles and just kind of see what it was doing to them. Just get an idea, get a sense for how durable are these soles in a rocking condition. I find myself around rocks a lot. So it's important to me that they're sticky around rocks. They're not rock climbing shoes, but they're part of the terrain that I find myself in a lot. So I've got some permit requests in the mail for San Jacinto sometime in June. There's a little bit of spotty snow, you know, above 9,000 feet right now, but for the most part, it's gonna be heating up. It's gonna be warming up. And I just didn't wanna take my Solomon Ultra 4s out there. So before I went back to San Jacinto for that backpacking trip that I've been thinking about for so long, I wanted to find the right pair of shoes for me. After testing out the Olympus 5s, and now today testing out the Lone Peak 8s, I think I have my decision for sure. Uh, two things I would say, I'm definitely gonna change the inserts out for some performance inserts. Those kind that are cork and you put them in the oven for a little while and then you put your feet on them and they kinda take the shape of your foot. Those worked out really nice for the Solomon Ultra 4, so I'm gonna do that for these. Also, if you're like me and you've never worn the zero millimeter heel to toe drop style shoes, in my experience, it hasn't been that hard to get used to. When I wore the Olympus 5s and I was doing a lot of bouldering and stuff like that, and I had no issues. I didn't have a pain in my Achilles. I didn't even really notice that I was walking any differently. For these, I can definitely tell that I'm walking a little bit differently. I think because I don't have such an extra amount of cushion, I can feel my heel wanting to lift off the ground a lot faster than where the shoe is lying, if that makes sense. Like, I can, I can feel that my heel is much lower and wants to travel much farther, but can't because I'm a little closer to the ground. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, it's kind of how it feels to me. But it's not painful. It's not causing me irritation while I'm hiking. It's not taking my mind off the scenery and kind of what I'm thinking about. So if you're hesitant to give them a shot because it, it may sound too uncomfortable or too big of a change, give it a shot, do a short hike. I bet you're probably gonna be fine. So for the Ultra Olympus 5s, I don't know. For the Lone Peak 8s, I definitely feel so far comfortable with taking these out in the backcountry. I think they're gonna do just fine. Again, if you're a new backpacker or a new hiker and you're wanting to get some trail runners and you're a little put off by all of the videos that are trashing the quality of these shoes, of course, those are real experiences, but ask yourself what you plan on putting your shoes through. What are the miles? What are the conditions? What are the elements? If you're not trying to crush a through hike and you're just doing a couple overnight somewhere, I bet you these shoes are gonna work out just fine for you. If you're in warmer climates, I would definitely recommend trying something out like trail runners before you go to a boot. These feel like they were broken in for me right out of the box. They're so comfortable. And in four or five weeks, I'm gonna take them up into San Jacinto. I'm gonna check out that peak because I missed it last time and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Anyways, that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.